we wanted to share with you what we have discovered um, as kind of our uh, foundational concepts, let's say, uh, in meeting design and facilitation. The things that we find ourselves coming back to you again and again when we facilitate great meetings. So we've got a few of these. Um, again, these are in the ebook, but uh, so the first one is potentially the most challenging. It is to maintain positive regard for each individual at all time. So when you are uh, in that role of facilitator, when you are at the front of the room or at the center of the Zoom, your role is to help the group do their best thinking. And one of the ways to do that is to really maintain positive regard. So that is assuming positive intentions. It is, it's also, as Sean mentioned, paying attention to what's not being said or what's, what else is floating, but really trying your best to maintain positive regard. What we find is that when that positive regard starts to slip, it shows up. So if you've ever been in a meeting with somebody, maybe you've been in a few meetings with them, maybe they've started to annoy you, um, and that regard slips and you're, you come back at them a little harsher than you meant to, you make an a, a offhand comment. So much of what we're doing with facilitation is um, instinctual. And so really paying attention to what our mindset is around positive regard. And I'll say oftentimes those aren't things that the person would notice, but they're things that I notice. Like, oh, I need to watch myself. I need to maintain that positive regard. The next piece in, um, we're gonna talk more about this when we get to the process of facilitation, but really 80% of the work of any meeting happens before you walk in the door. So for those of you who have done a lot of meetings, you know this to be true. It's all of the prep conversations. It's the meeting design. It's the getting the materials together. In the new world of Zoom, it's making sure you have all the right links and all the right places. But that prep work all that you do before really is what sets you up for success. So a lot of the ways to, to design and facilitate better meetings is just to have more prep time. All right, so Meredith already mentioned this one a little bit, but um, we really believe that you are responsible for creating a great container for the work. You are responsible for designing an engaging process, you're responsible for making sure that folks are able to attend, are, are in the room and able to fully participate, participate. But the folks who come are responsible for what they put in. So there really is this balance of how to create a better meeting, that it's not all on your shoulders. Participants need to do the homework if they have homework. They need to show up ready to uh, discuss or brainstorm or negotiate or decide. And sometimes you don't have control over that and that's okay. So particularly for folks who are new to facilitation, I often hear folks being really um, nervous about the outcome. And just to know that you are responsible for designing and leading a great meeting, but you may do 100% of the right things and if folks don't show up the right way, you're not gonna get there. All right, another thing we believe is that in thinking about designing a great meeting, it is all about the questions. What, by that, we really think about how do we ask the right questions to move the group along towards whatever outcome we've decided we need, whatever goal is there. So really thinking about how to stage the work how to get folks on the same page, how to ask people to think uh, uh, creatively, how to move folks out of uh, typical answers. It's all about how you craft those questions. So you'll see in our designs, often it's a whole series of questions and there's different ways we get people to answer them, but it's really about thinking through what are the conversations that people need to have to get them from when they walk in the door to the outcome we really want in that meeting. All right, just a couple other things that we um, 
usually that we that we tie our work to one is we always try to integrate the three modes of learning so um auditory visual and kinesthetic so it's easy on zoom right we are able you're able to hear us pretty well we can play music we're really attentive to that we tend on zoom and even in person to be less attentive to the visual learners what we have tried to do today is to make sure that our directions and other things have a slide associated with them so you are both hearing what we're saying and you're able to see it the most challenging in any meeting is usually the kinesthetic even more challenging now <laughs> but it's this idea that movement helps people learn it helps people process so even in a zoom environment um, asking folks to go into a breakout room and get the phone number of the person they're partnered with and then go for a walk. Um, giving people time to get up and move. Um, when we're in the in person world, doing things in small groups, having people move to make a choice along a spectrum and other ways that really helps get that movement form of learning. Two more things we want to add. One, be always present, observant, and flexible. So by present, we try to do the best we can to show up fully in the moment, paying attention to the client, paying attention to the group, paying attention to the work that needs to be done. So for us, that means we're, we're not paying attention to our phones, our email is turned off, this is really challenging in the Zoom environment, but really making sure we're present, we're mindful, we're able to be there. Observant, this is for what's happening and what's not happening. So who's participating and who's sitting back? Who has their camera off the whole time? And why is that? Some folks have a great reason to have their camera off, but really paying attention to what's happening and thinking about what that tells you about how you might need to shift things up, how that, what that tells you about how you might need to address it in the full group or address it one-on-one. -on -one. And then finally, flexible. Um, we always have a very strong design uh, as we go into any meeting and it almost always changes. We are constantly paying attention to how talkative is this group? How much time does this decision need to be made? Um, how much time do the folks need in small groups? We think they needed 15 minutes, but they're still having a really rich conversation. So let's let them go for another five minutes, right? So we're always trying to shift things up to make sure we get where we need to go. Last piece, it takes practice. It just does. <laughs> that is true for designing meetings, it's true for being the facilitator at the front of the room, it's true for any of these tactics that we're going to show you over the next couple of sessions. All of it takes practice. And so if you are newer to facilitation or you're newer to some of these tactics, think about what are some low risk ways you can try them out. What are some internal meetings you might want to facilitate or um, opportunities you have to try a new tactic with a group of friends. So just know that it, it takes a lot of practice.